doubleheader taking place between Gritted Mercy and Tufts beginning at 5.30, followed by the nightcap as the College of Staten Island will take on Bates College as the College of Staten Island looks to battle here in this 17th annual Tournament of Heroes. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Babuski, joined alongside Dave Pizzuto. And, you know, Dave, a big uh, weekend of basketball coming up here, but more important, 17th annual Tournament of Heroes here at CSI. Yeah, and we've been here for most of them, Mike. Uh, it's a very special tournament. Uh, two days, uh, four games, two today, and, of course, a consolation and championship tomorrow. Uh, Mike, the theme of this tournament in recent years has just been the national, national caliber teams that the Dolphins continue to bring in year in and year out. This is the 17th annual tournament. Dolphins have only won it twice, so it speaks to the caliber of teams that they bring in, and uh, this one should be just as good as we get set to honor all of those who lost their lives on 9-11, especially three uh, uh, former athletes of the CSI men's basketball team, uh, Terry Aiken, Scott Davidson, and Tom Hannafin. Uh, it's uh, a once-in-a-year uh, experience. It's always great to reflect, Mike, especially at this time in the holidays. We're here for a great reason. And, of course, we get to watch some exciting basketball along with it. And, you know, the College of Staten Island coming off of a big non-conference win on the road against uh, Kane University will be in action in the nightcap. But first, we got a very good opening game here coming up, Dave, is Tufts will take on Gwitted Mercy. And these are two real, real good basketball teams that will battle here in the opener tonight. Yeah, you know, Gwitted Mercy comes in. They're the uh, visiting team on the scoreboard anyway. But they come in with the tournament's best record. They're eight wins and four losses. And, Mike, when you do the math, they're already halfway into their season. This will be uh, this will be their past the, the halfway mark. Uh, they've been playing really well. They've had their difficulties on the road so far this season. They're just four and four away from home. But they've, they've gotten off to a great start. They have a very good offense. And then you have Tufts University, Mike, which – their four and five record is very deceiving. They're a very talented bunch. They get a, a lot of balanced scoring up and down their lineup. They have a lot of different playmakers, a lot of people they can rely on uh, all night long. So uh, they're a team to watch for sure. Uh, head coach TJ Tibbs of the CSI Dolphins, who we'll see in game two, said, hey, I wouldn't be surprised if whoever wins this first game is the uh, favorites going into day two because uh, both of these teams come from two great conferences and um, and their records only speak partly to how good they really are. Yeah, and, you know, Dave, uh, we start out and looking at this tough team that you're talking about, and you have uh, seven players on the team that are averaging – over eight points a game so you know that's a lot of balance in their attack and a lot of size and you know looking at Gwinnett Mercy they're coming in as you mentioned with the best record at eight and four and you know really also have some very impressive wins on their schedule here in the early going. Yeah and for Gwinnett Mercy uh, the guy you really got to keep your eye on is is Rich Dunham number 21 he's averaging well over uh, 20 points per game. He's second on the team in rebounding as well. And, you know, so much of the offense funnels uh, through him, and they can attack in a lot of uh, different type of ways. And, and you know, for Tufts, the, the same thing. They have five players scoring in double figures, Mike, which, and you know, you spoke to all those players, players averaging eight or more. You just never know who's going to step up and be the X factor of this team night in and night out. But Brennan Morris, Luke Rogers, Eric Savage, Tyler Aronson, they've all had um, some great games so far. And when Tufts wins games, they get contributions everywhere in their lineup. Yeah, and, you know, an opportunity to look at some of these teams, Dave, uh, for the first time. And, you know, that's one of the great things about the tournament is really teams come from all over the East Coast to play in it and, you know, an opportunity for the Dolphins to play against some of the better teams on the East Coast. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, one of the things that head coach T.J. Tibbs of the Dolphins uh, tells his group is that there's no team that you're going to face throughout the season that isn't going to give you as good a test or even more, um, you know, more of a test than um, than the teams that you'll face. And that includes uh, this, uh, this tournament, Mike, as you get – a preemptive look at our starters for tonight um, as we have about three minutes left until tip-off. Uh, you look at the tough starters on the screen. Again, I believe all five of those uh, players or four out of those five averaging uh, in double figures this season. Yeah, and, you know, the Dolphins uh, getting ready to face Bates in game number two. And, 
you know, an opportunity to uh, hook up with Jason Fine again, uh, Dave, as uh, Jason, of course, the former athletic director at College of Staten Island, uh, coming in and joining us here as you have an opportunity to look at the Gwen and Mercy uh, starters as well on your screen. Yeah, absolutely. As you see, the uh, starters get fans set up for game number one as we'll give you a look at our, our court in a few moments as well as both teams have come out now to uh, to warm up. And uh, But, yeah, Mike, this is uh, game one of a scheduled doubleheader. Uh, we believe that the start time for game two will probably be closer to 8 p.m., uh, they'll have 25 minutes between the games, and then there is a 8 to 10 minute ceremony to honor the three fallen heroes that CSI does in this uh, in this tournament. So we'll probably jump about 8 p.m. with our second game between CSI and Bates. Yeah, and you know we're really looking forward to that one. And you know the Dolphins coming in, and you know really continuing to improve, Dave. It's a new team and a different team, and you know looking forward to uh, their game. And we'll get, obviously have a chance to talk to that throughout the evening uh, here tonight but you know the Dolphins playing well the women's team playing well and you know they'll be back in action this weekend as well yeah absolutely uh, Sunday will be uh, women's basketball here at When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. Listen to me. I am captain of the track team. And, and if I'm late, she doesn't I'm really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? <gasps> wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Yeah, I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. Texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, has she texted me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here. We, we just, just finished dinner, dinner and, and it was time, time for homework. He hates, hates homework. It makes no sense. I don't know how he finds anything in his backpack. I can't find my backpack. I couldn't even read his handwriting. Holding the pencil makes my hand hurt. I know he's bright. Why is it so hard for me? He's I'm just trying as try hard as I harder. can. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help. When I was six, 
my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast.
gonna try to keep it a little bit like so you get like the top of the top of the shot clock. Team fouls in the first half. Savage with the basketball. Gets the ball up over to Kabujan. And now it's the Jumbos with the basketball as they look to set up offensively. Savage with the open three-pointer, and he buries it. And now it's going to be the Jumbos to take an 8-6 lead. Griffin working the ball out by the three-point line. That's Wolf now kicking the ball over into Dunham. That's we're going to have a foul on the outside. A little bit of a touch foul on the outside will be called on top. Is that foul is going to be the first foul on Aronson? It's the freshman for Holliston Mass picks up his first. Three team fouls now on Tufts. As driving the ball inside on the play, it's Dunham. Now kicking the ball out, it's now it's Cubbage. Eight seconds to shoot as Dunham looks to drive his way inside. His layup is up no good. Ball tipped and coming away with the basketball now will be Kamujan. Savage losing control of the basketball. Now a beautiful feed inside is Wolf with a beautiful bounce pass inside. And the layup by Dunham is up and in and we're tied now at eight. Aronson, or Kabujan with the basketball, now getting the ball out to Aronson. And now it'll be the Jumbos looking to set up offensively with 10 seconds to shoot. Aronson, the outside jumper, is no good. And the rebound grabbed by Summers. Bringing the ball up the floor is Dunham, but we're going to have a whistle and a carrying violation called on the Griffiths as they turn the ball over. And it will be Jumbo Basketball here with 16-10 remaining here in this first half. And we're tied at eight. Savage to inbound the basketball. Long cross court pass gets it into Rogers. And now it'll be Aronson bringing the ball across the midcourt line. Kamujan now working the ball to the top of the key to Rogers. He hands the ball off to Morris, but he gets called for the turnover. Morris, a sophomore player, and you look throughout this jumbo roster, just one senior player on the roster. And a very young starting lineup here for Tufts as they turn the ball over once again. Walking the ball up across the midcourt line now will be Wolf. And, Mar and he's going to be picked up there by Will Brady, who checked into the game now for the Jumbos. Mike, I want to apologize a bit for the technical difficulties. We had some audio problems, but we got it all fixed up and ready to go. So it uh, looks like we're back, back on track. So a three-pointer hit by Summers. Now that's his second. 
And the Griffins now have a three-point lead, 11-8. Feet inside now, working the ball inside and laying it up It's Gracie. That's no good. And the rebound grabbed by Dunham, and we're going to have a whistle, and committing the foul from behind is Racy for the Jumbos. Yeah, that was a little tough luck by Racy, who missed the uh, layup there from the, side of the, um, from the side of the rim, and then trying to hustle back quickly, he unfortunately rolled right into the Griffin on the play. So tough sequence that time for Racy. So Racy and Will Brady, early substitutions here for the Jumbos as they find themselves down by three. And now they work the ball inside now to Spencer. Spencer working his way inside, got himself open and laid it up and in. Yeah, that was a good first move by Donovan. You know, to and then having to uh, twirl around and get the layup the other way. Nice job by Spencer. So now it'll be the Jumbos with the basketball. The Savage looking to work his way to the rim, and he lays it up and in. Nice move that time by Eric Savage. Yeah, Jumbos are having some success attacking the basket on the smaller Griffin side. Griffin's now with the basketball. And laying the ball up and in is, is uh, Summers as that goes off the rim. No good. And the rebound grabbed there by Morris. And here come the Jumbos and the open three-pointer taken once again by Savage. And that's good. And he leads all scorers, Dave, with 10. Yeah, and you know what? He's going to be left out open there if uh, Tufts is able to continue to attack and draw the defenders inside. It's going to leave for some open shooters out there, and Savage buried it. So here comes the Jumbos looking to run once again as they are able to work the ball inside as that's Morris going hard to the rim. He can't hit the shot, Dave, but he will draw the foul. Yeah, so Tufts will have a ch an opportunity here. As that's going to be the third team foul for Gwyneth Mercy. Tufts does shoot really well from the free throw line. They're 72% as a team, and Morris up over 82%, so 10 percentage points above the team average. And he stays true to form, and Tufts has scored the last four points. So he now has four points, and Tufts has nudged their way back into the lead, Dave. Get the sense, though, just seeing how both of these teams play offensively. They love the transition game, Mike. There's going to be a lot of possessions in this game. Short possessions, running up and down the court. Just high-flying, very exciting basketball here. As we're going to have a substitution is, it'll be Eric DeBrine checking in now. And uh, no hesitation uh, by the Jumbos to go to the bench as they brought in three players already here in the first six minutes as we're going to have a whistle and another traveling violation. So both teams turning the ball over here a little bit, Dave, in the first six minutes or so. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the game's still within one possession either way. Both teams still trying to find themselves. We're six minutes in, but those turnovers will add up. So it'll be Savage to inbound the basketball and Brady to bring the ball across the midcourt line for the Jumbos. See the turnover picture on your screen there. Tufts with one more than Gwyn and Mercy. DeBrian with the basketball, they now work the ball and the cross court pass goes off the rim, but the Jumbo's able to maintain possession and the shot clock got reset and I think that was not what was needed there. So we'll have a official stoppage yep. of play. It's like they'll put 11 seconds up. So 11 seconds to shoot and that was a Interesting play there, Dave. Tufts looking to throw the ball cross court. Went off the side of the backboard and remained in play. So now it'll be the Jumbos with the basketball. Is That'll be Aronson putting up the long shot. That's no good. And the rebound grabbed by Dunham as he's able to work the ball inside the coverage and he lays it up and in. That was a gorgeous play by Dunham to get to that long rebound and then without missing a beat, really, again, starting that transition offense. As that long three-pointer by Brady is up and in, and you know, it looks like both these teams coming out and shooting well here from the three-point line, Dave, in the first half. Yeah, absolutely here as uh, we get more substitutions checking in, but looks like we're going to have a full timeout here called, and 
Um, I guess we'll keep it right here, Mike, and just talk about how both of these teams are going back and forth. But you mentioned that the three-pointer really working uh, for both teams. And really, it's starting from the inside out, Mike. A lot of defense, you know, drawing to the inside, into the paint, as the timeout just got changed to a 30, I believe, Mike. But, yeah, it's leading to some good open looks on the outside. Yeah, as, uh, you know, we look over at head coach uh, John Barron and, pretty emphatic that he called a 30-second timeout there, Dave. And, uh, I don't know if he's going to get that as both teams are he, he's, I, going. I, don't, I don't think he is going to get it, Dave. No, and there was plenty of opportunity to insist on it being a 30-second. Uh, Instead, it was a, a one-minute, 15-second timeout. So you see the three-pointers on the screen. Tufts already with four and Gwyn and Mercy with three. And both teams shooting the ball extremely well, Mike. Gwyn and Mercy at 60% and Tufts at 66 and, a, and, a, and two thirds. So the shooting has been very good here in the early going for both teams and that includes from beyond the arc. Yeah, and you know, both teams show a good guard play here early, Dave, in the game. And you know, uh, Gwen and Mercy trying to put a little bit of pressure on the Tufts backcourt, and they've done a good job dealing with it. And you know, at the same time, Tufts playing some nice defense and you know, some good ball handling uh, by the Griffiths as well. And uh, good offensive start here for both teams early. Yeah, so it's, and it's important too. It's important too with the um, with the starts that both teams has had because if one team got off to a slower start, Mike, this could be an eight, ten point game. Instead, both teams kind of keeping pace, and you wonder if they can keep this pace up. So the ball get works inside now, and the outside jumper is off the rim. No good. Is that was Sluion who's checked into the game as the ball gets worked inside now to Kamujin, but he loses possession and here comes a three on one opportunity and a good fast break opportunity that time is going strong to the basket is Dunham to lay it up and in and you know that was a rare uh, odd man break here in the first half. Yeah, and that play was started by Dunham as well with that with that little poke on the dribble to set the ball free and then he took it the the, the entire way down the floor. As that time, it's Kamujin with the long three-pointer. That's no good. And it's the Griffiths once again with the basketball. Is breaking it inside is Wolf. He feeds the ball back. A nice defensive play that time by DeBrine. And here come the Jumbos now with the basketball. Is a nice move by Aronson. His shot is up no good. But there to grab the weak side rebound is DeBrine to lay it up and in. So freshman to freshman for the layup there. Yeah, I was going to say uh, Tufts is very high on Eric DeBrine. 6'6 six, six freshman from Redwood City, California. He uh, certainly stepping up here in the early stages. As the ball gets worked inside and the layup that time by Spencer is up and in and that was a nice strong move to the basket by Spencer. 27, uh, 2019 the score as the Jumbos holding a one point lead and they have possession of the basketball as the ball getting fed out now to DeBrine and that long three pointer is good. Yeah, how about DeBrine really averaging just 3.9 points per game Coming into that, he's well up over that already here in the early stages. Big minutes here for DeBrine. Dunham getting the ball to Wolf. His short jumper is no good, but the ball's going to go out of bounds, and we're going to have a whistle, and I think we're going to have a foul on the play, and that foul is going to be on Tufts as we're going to have a couple of more substitutions here on the play, Dave. Yeah, both teams, you know, they go so fast up and down the floor, Mike, that they they need the legs coming off the bench to keep up. We haven't seen much half-court offense from either one of these teams so far. It's been a lot of run and gun up and down the floor. So it'll be Morris checking back into the game, so... Both, both teams with a lot of substitutions here, Dave, uh, th throughout this first half. Yeah, both teams going a little bit on the bigger side now. As now the ball's going to get worked inside to Spencer. He gets the ball out now to Dunham as they now look to set up the offense with 14 to shoot. A nice move inside by Spencer, but it looks like we're going to have a whistle and a foul on the outside. 
As we had a little bit, a little bit of contact on the play, Dave, and that's going to be a foul on Luke Rogers, and that's a big foul on Rogers, Dave, because that'll be his second. Yeah, it's that double move by Spencer that's been crossing up tops a little bit. That time Rogers was the victim, picking up a touch foul on the baseline. As that long outside jumper taken that time by Racy is up no good. And here come the Jumbos, but that time it's going to be Morris losing possession of the basketball as Summers feeds the ball inside to Dunham. That shot is no good. And now we're going to have a whistle and a loose ball foul called on the Griffins, and they didn't like that call. Well, good job by Brennan Morris. Good concentration by him to stay with that. The sophomore was triple teamed on that rebound. Managed to see himself out of it, pick up a foul the other way. And that foul is going to be called on Dunham, and that will be his first and the team's fourth as Aronson brings the ball up across the midcourt line. Morris, he looked to get the ball inside, but good defense by the Griffith. And now they'll have to reset their offense as they feed that ball inside to Oppenheim, and now they work it over to DeBrine, who lays it up and in. And Shown a lot here, Dave, in the last minute or two. Yeah, he averages 13 points a game, like we mentioned before, averaging just under four points per game. But, man, has he been hot here in these middle stages of the first half. Somers with the basketball. Somers picks up his dribble. The tough fadeaway jumper is good, and he's had a good game, Dave. A couple of three-pointers. Now that outside jumper, he has eight. Yeah, he had a steal the other way as well earlier. As Aronson comes right back and hits the jumper, and, Getting treated to a lot of offense here, Dave, in this first half. It'll be a 30-second timeout, so let's keep it right here. But a lot of offense here in the first half and a lot of good play by both teams. Yeah, it's been exciting. You know, we're tr getting treated to some really good basketball. This is fun. You know, we almost can't, you know, catch our breath, Mike. We Every time we look down at our paper to give you a stat, there's something else going on. So uh, it's been exciting basketball. It's, uh, it's what this tournament is all about. And we're getting treated to a really good one. Both teams still shooting the ball really, really well here in the early stages, and the fans getting treated to, to a good one here. Tufts with the lead coming off of a basket the other way. Yeah, you know, as you mentioned, Dave, Tufts shooting 10 of 15 from the field, 67%, and, you know, and the Griffins right there, Dave, at 50%, 9 of 18. Yeah, and the teams are combining to shoot over 50% from three-point range as well. They are 8 of 13 together. We're going to look at a little bit of half-court offense now, something we're not used to. So it'll be Wolf bringing the ball across the mid-court line. As it'll be the Griffiths looking to set up offensively. They feed the ball inside to Spencer, and now it'll be Summers as the Jumbos force the Griffiths outside now. As it, Once again, that shot by Spencer is knocked away, but he hangs right with it as uh, picking up the uh, loose ball is Sluion, Dave, as he gets his first basket of the night. Yeah, so Sluion, right place, right time, able to get that second chance point in. And that outside jumper taking that time by uh, DeBrine is good. He has 10 points off the bench here for the Jumbos. Summers comes right back. That long jumper is no good, but nice offensive rebound that time as the Griffiths with another opportunity is Summers doesn't miss the second one, Dave, as he makes them pay as he buries the three. Yeah, that's what both teams are showing is if you give them second chance opportunities, they're going to make you pay. And right now, Gwyneth Mercy with a lot of second chance uh, points so far. That log three-pointer is in and out. And now it'll be the Griffiths with the basketball. Down four is Wolf, the off-balance jumper in the lane, is up no good. But the ball will be knocked out of bounds. Last touch by the Jumbo, so it will be Griffin basketball. And they're starting to do a little bit better job on the offensive glass, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. The offensive rebounds are now 3-1 to one in favor of Gwyneth Mercy, but it's leading to that edge and second chance points, which is 5-2 at this point. So Dunham will get the ball inbounds and get the ball back at the three-point line. He feeds it over to Cubbage. Cubbage, one bounce, and the jumper is up no good, and going up high for the rebound is DeBrine. As he worked the ball over to Morris, now over to DeBrine, back up to Savage, and pulling up and taking the three-pointer that time, and missing it is Rogers, and now it'll be the Griffiths with the basketball. Wolf 
Summers, the log three-pointer is up no good. It's, he doesn't hesitate. And now it'll be the Jumbos coming back. Is driving to the basket and drawing the foul on the play is Savage. That was a big, strong move by the junior as he lays it up and in. Yeah, when Savage received that ball, he had a couple of options, either right or left. He decided to attack instead. Good choice, good decision, and then good concentration in the lane to bank that one off the glass and in. Chance to complete the three-point play. So Savage, the six-foot, three-inch junior, both teams with five team fouls apiece as rolling that one up and in will be Savage. Savage right down the turnpike a little bit, Dave, right from South Brunswick, New Jersey. Yep, and Tufts remains perfect at the line as well here in the early stages. So three for three from the line opens up their biggest lead of the game. Dunham with the basketball, now over to Summers. Bounce pass over to Perkins. <laughs> Perkins now handing the ball off, backing his way up and laying it up and in his coverage. coverage. Nice strong move, Dave. They needed a basket badly and got a high percentage shot. Yeah, and that's how they started the game, kind of pounding the ball inside, looking for the easy layups inside. And after a couple of missed threes, Gwendolyn Mercy going back to that game. So now it's Savage with the basketball out by the three-point line, 10 seconds to shoot as they work the ball in the corner. The tough baseline jumper that time uh, by Racy is good. That was a nice looking jumper, Dave, off a of good defense that time by the Griffins. Yeah, not an easy look that time, but making it, uh, making it count. 35-28 to score as the ball fought for inside and now a turnover and an opportunity now as Morris looks to drive his way inside and he lays it up and in and that was another good strong move. <laughs> And now a nine-point lead, Dave, for the Jumbos. Yeah, and if you're winning Mercy now, you need some big baskets and you need some better defense on the other side as we're going to have a moving foul, a screen inside. Yeah, and so instead a big turnover on the offensive foul that time by Jordan Perkins, and that's going to be his second and yeah. the team's sixth, so they'll be in the penalty on the next foul. It's one thing that Gwyn and Mercy has done well in this half is protect the basketball, but that's their fourth turnover here. And I think what's more important than even protecting the ball in their offense is needing to So now both teams, I believe, with six uh, team fouls apiece as it will be the Griffins with the basketball. They work the ball now on the far side as now they work the ball across now to Wolf. And the whistle, and we're going to have a foul on the play, and that foul is going to be called on Racy. And boy, Dave, I don't know about that one. They've a couple of pretty soft fouls here in this first half. Yeah, I believe that's Racy's second, and I don't want to call it a touch foul, but it happened a little bit late and away from the ball a little bit because the ball was put on. I, I You know, Dave, I could swear that's the seventh foul. Yeah, and it is. On and that's, that's That's the reason... Um, for so, the stoppage, yeah. uh, the uh, official stat table blew the horn, and it's going to be foul number seven. The scoreboard has five fouls apiece, but we had five fouls earlier. Yeah, seven, seven is, definitely is definitely correct, Dave. So I think the officials uh, have it right, and we'll see if we can get the scoreboard fixed. But, you know, Tufts has really come out and, and, and played well. And, you know, Dave, they always, they always say that when, you know, when you're shooting on fire, you always look good. And, you know, shoot, shooting 67%, including 60% from the uh, three-point line are not statistics really that you could keep up throughout 40 minutes, but a real good. Good start here for the Jumbos in this first half as they're coming out and playing a very strong team. Is good. It looks like we're going to have a little break in the action as we get the uh, situation straightened out uh, on the floor, Dave. Yeah, it's going to be an official timeout uh, on the floor as they work to get the scoreboard in order. It's got stuck on five fouls for some reason, but we saw the official stat flash up on your screen. At seven to six, Tufts with seven fouls. It will put um, Gwynedd Mercy at the line for the first time in this one, as we're going to have a reset of the scoreboard as well here. Yeah, I believe it's seven six is yep. the correct count, Dave. 
And that's what on, we had on on the play, and and um, you know, again, Tufts coming out and you know, really showing good things. So while we step aside, take a break as we get uh, ready. Tufts leading 37-28, and we'll be right back. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. That's why we're here. We're free and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Go to GetSchool.com. We're back here, and Tufts ha finds themselves with the biggest lead in the game, uh, Dave, 37-28. And, you know, we talked about it a little bit uh, before we went off the air, but, you know, when you come out, Dave, and you're shooting 67% from the field and hit six of your first ten three-point attempts, you should have the lead, and they're up by nine. Yeah, absolutely, Mike, and there's really not much you could do. And what we said in the early stages was, you know, when a team is, is shooting that hot, it's a good thing that both teams started off really hot in the game. Otherwise, games can get out of hand very early when one team is shooting 60 or above 60%. The other team is shooting, you know, hovering around in the 40s. It could get out of hand. But both teams started uh, really fast in this one. You see the three-pointers on your screen. Tufts already with six, and that's out of just 10 attempts. Uh, Gwyneth Mercy, not bad, four of nine, but they've fallen under the 50% mark in that one. But... Grin and Mercy's fallen off a little bit, but they're still shooting the ball pretty well. They're at 46% for the game so far, 12 of 26. They've actually taken four more shots than Tufts has. Dan, you know, Dave, you look, you look at this Tufts lineup and, you know, you see Savage uh, who leads all scores with 13 points on five of five shooting and Eric DeBrine right behind him. Uh, with 10 points early in the game, and he's 4-4. Four four, and, you know, like we mentioned, when you come out and you shoot the basketball well, everything you do really looks good. Yeah, absolutely. As now I think they got the correct fall, uh, fouls are correct. So Tufts has seven fouls. Gwyneth Mercy has six. And for some reason, the scoreboard wasn't going over five fouls. That must have been a women's basketball um you know, statute there that was in effect, but they've reset the clock, and we're going to have a, th a one and one opportunity here for Gwyneth Mercy's Greg Barton. So Barton's free throw is up no good, and the rebound will be grabbed by Oppenheim, and here come the Jumbos with the basketball. They have their biggest lead of the game. It's nine points. Aronson cross-court now to Brady. He feeds the ball out to Oppenheim. Out, but Oppenheim holding the ball out by the top of the key. Now works the ball over, and that long jumper is good. And Got a shot boy, clock problem boy, now. Yeah, boy, and if you're the Griffiths, you can't be happy about this. Uh, the, these last couple of situations on the play, a big three-pointer that time by Tufts with the clock off, and it, and, um, it hasn't been added to the uh, now it is, yeah. score. Now it is, and now all of a sudden the Griffiths find themselves down by 12 points as Tufts' out, uh, outstanding shooting, Dave, continues. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, with whatever would happen with the game clock, it reset the shot clock, so now then the shot clock wasn't working. So with 5.05... Tufts had plenty of time on the shot clock, so it wasn't a question of, you know, the, the shot clock wasn't running, Mike, but they had plenty of time left on that shot clock. Now it's just a matter of when the game clock resets and starts to run, that shot clock's got to run with it. And, you know, unfortunately this scoreboard problem has derailed things a little bit on what was a lightning-fast game up until this point. And there'll be some regrouping at halftime for sure with 5.05 left you see on your screen. Yeah. Keep, it, keep an eye on the shot clock here, Mike. Sorry, David. You know, you look at uh, tough statistics throughout the year. They've only come in uh, into uh, tonight's game shooting 35% uh, from the free throw line, and actually opponents have outshot them by about 10 percentage points on the year, which is uh, says something about the level of play mm -hmm. of their opponents. Sure. Uh, but they've come out here tonight, Dave, and hit 60% of their three-pointers uh, and. 
you know, it, 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 they look great when you're going in. Uh, so let's see if uh, Tufts can continue that here in the first half. Yeah, officially Tufts 7 of 11 from three-point range. So the shot clock is at 25 seconds, and it is running. So looks like we're all set, Mike. Here's to a uh, worry-free last five minutes for our scoreboard operators. So Wolf gets the ball over to Barton. Barton now works the ball up to Summer. It's a big possession here for the Griffins. They need a basket as spitting the ball inside and laying it up as coverage. That's no good. But that time it's Barton, the big freshman grabbing the offensive rebound. Couldn't put it back in, Dave, but he did draw the foul and will go to the free throw line. Yeah, and the offensive rebounds are now 5-1 to one in favor of Gwyneth Mercy. And now they've got to make these stand up. You look at the free throws on your screen. Tufts a perfect three of three, and Gwyn and Mercy looking for their first make so far of the game. But if they're going to earn themselves some trips here, they need to make these. And now they're 0 for 2 with Barton looking at the back end of a two-shot foul. So Barton misses the first. He'll have one more upcoming as they come in shooting 70% from the uh, free throw line as a team. As Barton second is up and in. Yeah, so that stops the bleeding a little bit. But if you're Gwyneth Mercy now, you need some defensive stops. So 40-29 the score. The Griffins only allowing 70 points a game, but they've given up 40 here through just over 15 minutes in the first half. Yeah, we knew both teams were going to score, Mike. We just didn't know which team would be able to corral the other. And now it's Oppenheim with the basketball. A beautiful feed inside that time to Morris, who lays it up and in, and another nice offensive play that time by Tufts. Yeah, what a beautiful look by Oppenheimer. Perfect harmony with Brennan Morris, and they made it hurt. So now it's going to be an opportunity here. As the Griffiths looking to fight their way back in the game as it's Summers. Working the ball out now to Dunham. Dunham pulls up and hits the jumper in a big basket that time. Something the Griffiths really needed, Dave. Yeah, give and go one way and then a give and go the other way. Summers to Dunham and Dunham with the second fake. Shake and bake, pops it down. Aronson with the basketball now. Working the ball out over to Brady. They feed the ball back now to Aronson. Nice move. He pulls up for the jumper and that's good. And boy, the hot shooting for Tufts. Just goes on and on here in this first half, Dave. They're over 70% now. Yeah, just, just shooting really, really well. And, you know, when things are going well, it seems like everything's going in. And that was not an easy look by Aronson over the outstretched arms of the defense and made it count again. Spencer working the ball up over to Jalen Peebles, who checked in. He fights his way inside. That's Wolf, whose shot is no good. And here comes Aronson right back for the Jumbos. Aronson puts up that long three-pointer. That's no good. And Spencer there to grab the rebound. And taking the ball coast to coast on the play is Peebles, but he can't hit the layup. Yeah, went a little bit in too hard that time, expecting contact. Brady puts up the three-pointer. That's no good. But the ball will be tipped back and will be controlled now by Tufts. Oppenheim out by the three-point line, and they'll pull the ball back and set up offensively as Tufts continues to play a very strong half. Long outside three-pointer that time by Savage is no good. And Tufts. here comes Wolf's side, Dave, with the rebound. Tufts is now even with their three-pointers as we're going to have a travel violation. Yeah, as that time Summers went up and down with the ball, thought he might have put it on the floor before he landed. Not sure he did, Dave. I, I, I kind of thought it was a turnover with the naked eye. But uh, nonetheless, it will be jumbo basketball. Yeah, tough break that time for Gwen and Mercy. As they really need to string together some strong offensive drives here. They're down by 13. They'd love to get this down to eight points or so here at half is what you'd like to see here if you're head coach John Barron. Meanwhile, Tufts has missed their last three three-pointers, Mike, so they've cooled off a little bit. Well, you know, the one thing you know for sure, Dave, is they're not going to shoot, you know, 60% from the three-point line. It's just very difficult to do with a lot of attempts as now they work the ball onto the outside and feed the ball back up over to Savage. He looks to work his way inside, but instead we're going to have an offensive foul uh, called on the play, and that's going to be on Savage. That's a big foul, Dave, because that's going to be his second. 
Yeah, that's the third straight. You can see the three-pointers on your screen. That's the third straight empty possession uh, for Tufts tonight. And the only problem is Gwyneth Mercy hasn't been able to take advantage of these empty possessions, and there haven't been many by the Jumbos so far. But if you're Gwyneth Mercy, you know, and this has kind of been their weakness of the first half, has been the half-court game where Tufts has been able to kind of set themselves up 2-3 zone. And Gwyneth Mercy hasn't been able to really install their offense yet, minus the fast break and the transition game. Yeah, but now Savage on the bench with two personal fouls with two minutes left. So his 16 points on the bench, and Griffith's looking to work their way back into the game here. Trailing by 13 is Wolf with the basketball. Wolf feeding it over to Cubbage. Cubbage working his way inside, and he's going to draw the foul and go to the free throw line, and that will be foul number 10 on the jumbo, so they'll be in the double bonus for the rest of the half. As the foul will be on Oppenheim, that will be his first, and that's going to send Cubbage to the free throw line to shoot two. Cubbage 18 of 33 from the line. That's 55% for the Griffiths as he's able to roll that one in, and they creep back to within 12. Yeah, and that's what they need. They need the free ones to go down, does Gwyneth Mercy. They've gone to the line now, three of the last four possessions, and they'd like to take advantage here going into the halftime break. Down by 12 and maybe 11 with this free throw. That second free throw is up and in, so it's now an 11-point game as Cubbage with six. And we'll have a substitution here with just over a minute 45 seconds remaining here in the first half. You see Gwen and Mercy employing a little bit of a lazy press. Again, trying to get a little bit more action on half court. Brady handing the ball off to Kamujin. Now Aronson working the ball back for a wide open three point look that's in and out. And Wolf goes to grab the rebound. And here come the Griffiths with an opportunity as that's Dunham driving down the lane, and laying it up and in, and all of a sudden, Dave, the lead's down to nine. Well, that's where the Griffins are at their best in that transition game, fast break style offense. That time they were able to take advantage of a miss, race down the court for an easy two. Aronson looking to work his way inside, and he's going to be fouled on the play. And Boy, tough foul call that time on the Griffiths will send the jumbos to the free throw line to shoot a one and one and a big help that time I thought Dave to Tufts is they were struggling offensively and an opportunity now for Aronson to go to the free throw line with a one and one. Yeah and Aronson on the possession before got up very slowly for Tufts he's obviously okay as he attacked the basket this last time out and now he's at the line. And you mentioned they're a good free throw shooting team shooting 73% Aronson at 77% will go to the free throw line for a one and one. As that first one is up and in. And, and Tufts it, remains perfect at the line so far, Mike, four for four. Yeah, and that opens the lead up to 10 points and stops the little bit of the Griffin run. As Aronson's second free throw is up off the back rim, no good. But a beautiful offensive rebound by DeBrien. Yeah, DeBrien's been very active. Scored 10 early points in this one. Picks up a big offensive rebound. As that's Kamuja driving down the lane. That's no good. And here comes Wolf with the basketball as he feeds the ball over to Cubbage. His shot is up. No good. It's that time Cubbage rushed it a little bit. As Kamuja drives down the lane, he can't hit the shot, but he does draw the foul. Yeah, you see, once again, that fast break style of play. Both teams were running it the first six, seven minutes of the game almost exclusively. Things slowed down a little bit in the middle stages, but both teams getting back to that, and Tufts getting to the line for the second straight possession. They're four or five from here. So two free throws coming up here as he misses the first, and... Justin came in 18 of 22 from the line, Dave. That's 82%. And, boy, you love those good free throw shooters in the in close games, Dave. Yep, and man, just to make one of two that time. But Tufts opening the lead back up to 11. And now it's going to be the Griffiths with the basketball as that's Wolf handing it off to Dunham. Dunham now to Cubbage. 
as they're circling around the three-point line, and now it's Carter with the basketball. Now to Summers with, a, with 10 seconds left to shoot. Dunham handing the ball off to Wolf as Griffith's working the ball around the three-point line. Now Wolf drives down the lane and misses the layup, but Morrison able to play the ball, and the buzzer goes off, and the long shot put up that time by Kabujan is up no good. And here comes the Griffiths with the basketball as Wolf puts it up at the buzzer. That's no good, so Tufts will go into halftime with a 46-35 lead, Dave. Shooting cooling down, but still going in, shooting 57% at halftime. Yeah, both teams shooting the ball uh, very well. Tufts, really the story of the first half, they shot 57%, and they'll take an 11-point lead into the lockers. So we're at halftime. Tufts leading by a score of 46-40-35. Uh, what we'll do is step aside. We'll take a break for a few minutes, and then we'll be back to bring you halftime statistics and get you ready for the start of the second half. You're watching coverage of the 17th Annual Tournament of Heroes right here on Your Voice of Everything CSI Sports, CSI Sportsnet, CSIDolphins.com. Hi, I'm Peter, and there's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with my friends. Come on in! Help yourself to anything! That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it, store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. To learn more, visit savethefood.com. I remember, Dad, you and Mom got this car with a hatchback. I said, you know, I'd be happy to give you the money to get a really great car. And he said, well, no, this works for me. I says, why? Because it's the right height to put the meals in. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, tell me when you first got an inkling about Meals on Wheels. There was kind of an abandoned house. That's where we got started with Meals on Wheels. We kind of filled the need for people as they got older. It's the human interaction that probably fed them much more than the food. Oh, yeah. When you can see somebody else benefiting by your life in some way, you can't help but feel good about it, I think. Well, the reason I'm involved, Dad, is because you are, and you're so inspiring. How you've impacted people is enormous. Drop off a warm meal and get more than you expect. Volunteer at americaletsdolunch.org. America, let's do lunch. <laughs> Dad is an adventure full of special moments. A cruise? Right. Unexpected moments. I got this. And even awkward moments. Okay, Dad, thank you. <laughs> But every moment you spend with your kids, even the smallest moments, can make the biggest impact on your child's life. So take a moment to be a dad today. Hi, Krista. Take you, Jamie, to be my wife. The ceremony was a blast. It was just like this surreal moment of my dreams are coming true. When we found out that we were pregnant, we were just elated. We were just sitting there waiting for the pediatrician. She said, oh, I apologize, she won't be taking you in as a client. We are a lesbian couple, but she's just a baby. She's the one you're denying the service to. And sitting there in that small, cold room, 
I wanted to cry, just thinking, what did we bring this kid into? We're simply asking to treat our family the same way that you would treat any family. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. So we, so were, we were walking, walking to, to school. school. At, At the, the corner, corner we, waited we waited for the, for the traffic, traffic light. light. I started thinking about lunch. Mom got me turkey and cheese. She's smart. I really want cheese pizza. But like at Luigi's. sometimes her mind wanders. They have this video game there, and Kate's got the high score. We should have a sleepover. Maybe I should pack my pajamas. I remember saying, Laura? Laura? I think I heard Mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. When, when we, we finally, finally got, got there, there, she gave me a hug goodbye. I really hope she doesn't I have really another bad day at school today. I really hope I don't have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. That's why there's understood.org, a free online resource for the parents of the one in five kids with learning and attention issues. Here you'll get personalized recommendations, practical tips, daily access to experts, and more. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. Hi. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home, just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Give kisses. Give kisses. You heard how loud I know, I heard, I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Do you want to retire like a champ? Just like legendary basketball star Uncle Drew? Don't do it like that, Uncle Drew! You're already acing the game. You've got your dream ride. Don't be slamming my door. Sorry about that. <sighs> you just did the nah, same. Gotta get the boys. Your dream vacation and your dream team. And now you can make your retirement just as legendary. I get buckets. Get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. First time I tried biking and it was laying around my mom's house. And then I kept taking them whenever I could get them. I didn't know they'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. No doubt you're going places, young lady. Thank you. And thank you for the interview as well. I can imagine it was the last thing that you wanted to do after such a long campaign meeting. You really are a very intelligent young woman. You're very smooth. You're very smooth yourself. <laughs> you have no idea.
Awkward. On the awkward silence. You try to avoid me. Then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Do you... We're back here at halftime where uh, Tufts University leads Gwyneth Mercy by a score of 46 to 35. I'm Mike B. Busky alongside Dave Pizzuto. And, you know, Dave, the story of the first half, the great shooting by Tufts University, 17 of 30 from the field, including 7 of 15 from the three-point line. Yeah, you take a look at the uh, stats on your screen, Mike, and that pretty much tells the story. Tufts has had four less shots taken than Gwyn and Mercy, but their hot shooting continues. They were up over 70% at one point late in this first half. They cooled down a little bit towards the end, but you see the percentages there, 56.7%. Both teams an identical 7 of 15 from three-point range, although at one point I believe Tufts was 7 of 10 uh, in from three-point range. Free throw shooting nearly identical as well. The rebounds strictly in favor of Tufts and the turnovers there. Gwyn and Mercy has a slight edge, but it was, uh, it was good uh, field goal shooting, Mike, that really told the story. And to me, Mike, the story of the first half was the transition game of both teams. Seemed like both teams were really making that, that hallmark. And towards the middle stages of the first half, Tufts really took control by setting up a better half-court offense. They moved it around. They worked inside and then out. They set themselves up with some open looks. And Gwyneth Mercy, you could tell that they were just a little bit more uncomfortable playing that type of game and it wasn't until the la later stages where they started to run again where, where they picked up the tempo a little bit more yeah and you know uh Gwyn and mercy really did a nice job day because you know tufts came out really shooting on fire like you mentioned and you know they did a nice job of hanging in the game and you know they they're coming in they're shooting uh, only 41% of the field, but, you know, they got to come out and think if they uh, play a little bit better defensively uh, that they can get themselves right back into the second half. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of those games that can go either way still because both teams score have the potential to score a lot of points in bunches. Uh, both teams have the potential to really get uh, some good runs in, and it's because of that transition game. It's because of that uh, high-octane offense up and down the court that really does it. And there was a stretch there where the Griffins were creating a lot of turnovers as well. Towards the end, the turnovers kind of evened out a little bit. But at one point, uh, it was something like 5-1, to one, the turnovers, something like that. So uh, that's where the Griffins were really getting a lot of, a lot of good positive activity. And they need to get back to that in the second half. Yeah, and, you know, Dave, you look at the way that uh, Tufts came out and shot the basketball, especially in the early part of the first half. But, you know, it uh, Tufts, had their lead knocked down to seven points in the latest stages and you know they got to go to uh they being toughs got to go to the free throw line a couple of times late in the first half but you know it seemed like uh the griffiths were playing much better defense toward the end of the first half and giving toughs a little bit more problems offensively yeah and you know what the rebounds have a big uh, a big to do with that you know especially you know, we talked about the Griffins' ability to get some second-chance points early in the first half. That that dissipated a lot as well because the, uh, the Jumbos did a much better job uh, on the glass, both offensively and defensively. And if there's a, a real key area where head coach John Barron is going to talk to his team, it's going to be about hitting the glass a little bit better here in the second half. Listen, you can't help when a team shoots 70, 65, 70% from the floor. You know that, that that's going to work in ebb and flows. But what you can control is the glass and cleaning that up, and that's what the Griffins will look to work on in half, too. And, you know, Dave, you look at the fouls, only one player with three personals, and that's Patrick Racy, uh, two fouls apiece for Savage and Oppenheim. On the Griffin side, it's Perkins and Coverage with two fouls apiece. So uh, no team really in major foul trouble, but, you know, of course, that could turn on, on a dime in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no team really has to worry about that too much, and, you know, we've seen the uh, the, the scoring, really, from uh, Eric Savage uh, leading the way for Tufts with 13 points. He's 5 of 6. And then how about Eric DeBrine averaging just 3.9 points per game? He has 10 in the first half with four rebounds, um, and he played a majority of the way. Uh, well, he only played, I'm sorry, eight and a half minutes in that first half. So uh, big numbers for him. 
Gwyn and Mercy uh, being led by Matt Summers with uh, 11 points, and then Rich Dunham, who started off hot, uh, finishes with eight points in the half. So should be an exciting one here, Mike. Final 20 minutes to see who plays in the championship tomorrow at 3 p.m. and who plays in the consolation at 1. Yeah, and, you know, we should mention, uh, Dave, about 35 uh, minutes or 40 minutes or so after the conclusion of this game, we'll be back with the nightcap as the College of Staten Island will take on Bates uh, for the right to advance into the championship round. And the game's tomorrow, Dave, at 1-3, and three, so a little bit earlier than uh, – than, uh, these games sometimes take place. Yeah, and you know what that means? It's, that it's a really short turnaround. As you can see, coming up next is CSI's game. And then, uh, you know, the, the losing teams from today have to come back and play at 1 o'clock tomorrow. The winning teams play at 3, but it's a very short turnaround. Both teams will go to their either homes or, or their respective hotels, get a good night's sleep, wake up, shoot around again here in the gym, and then get ready for game number two. And uh, for us as a staff, too, Mike, it's a pretty short turnaround as well. So um, a lot of basketball condensed into about, you know, 18 hours or so. And uh, we're looking forward to it. So, Dave, what uh, as uh, the Griffins try to work themselves back from an 11-point deficit, what, are they, what do they need to do in the second half to work their way back? Well, to me, really, the most important thing is just to continue what they want to do offensively, which is run the transition game. It's hard to do that when the opposing team is shooting 70%, but you got to hit the glass hard, you got to work hard for rebounds, and then try to get back the other, the other way. You take a look at the fast break points. They're working in Tufts favor so far, but uh, Gwynedd Mercy really hasn't had a chance to do a lot of stuff on the break because um, Tufts has shot the ball so well. So it'll be the Griffins with the basketball to start the second half, and we're underway as they will go left to right in the second half. Cubbage with the basketball, works it over to Summers. Summers started out hot. They need offense out of him in the second half, and a beautiful block that time by Luke Rogers on the play. It'll remain Griffith's basketball with 13 to shoot. They inbound the basketball now, and they get the ball out over to Wolf. Inside a 10th to shoot, he feeds it inside to Cubbage. Cubbage's short jumper is up no good, and it's Rogers there with the rebound. And here come the Jumbos. Kamuchin with the basketball. Justin with a rough first half. He was 0 for 5 from the field. And now he'll work the ball in the corner to Aronson. Aronson spitting his way inside. The bank shot is up no good. But there inside to grab the rebound is Rogers to lay it up and in. He has the strong first minute to hear Dave in the second half. Yeah, and Tufts has officially doubled up Gwyneth Mercy on the glass. 21 to 10 now is the lead. As that ball is knocked away, nearly stolen by Savage, but the Griffins able to maintain possession. Wolf with the ball in the lane, now bringing the ball out to Dunham, but he's going to get called for the travel. A big travel uh, that time on the Griffins as they get off to a slow start here in the second half. Yeah, there's a turnover there. They almost turned it over the last time, too. They were able to win it back. Summers did, but it's been a little sloppy here to start. Mujin with the basketball. And Tufts with a 13-point lead. Now it's Aronson. Aronson working the ball out over to Savage. His long three-pointer is up no good. And the rebound grabbed by Wolf. Wolf working the ball in the corner to Summers, and he starts off hot in the second half to make it a 10-point game. Yeah, that's another basket on the fast break for Gwyn and Mercy, and that's where they do their best damage in the transition game. Savage lobbing the ball inside that time, and Rogers lays it up and in, and big play that time. And Rogers now with four points, both in the first uh, two minutes of the second half. Yeah, did a nice job imposing his will against Perkins, who gives up a lot of weight on the inside. As working the ball inside and laying it up and in and drawing the foul is going to be Perkins. Nice play that time by the Griffins. And, Mike, while we have a break, we want to say hi to everybody joining us here on the air. A lot of fans from both of these schools and, of course, our usual contingent. And none more so, Mike, than my wife, Jennifer, who's at home, uh, you know, sick the last couple days, uh, like most people in the area with, uh, with the flu and, and other colds that are running around. But a uh, diehard fan that she is, she's listening to us, and we thank her. And, Jen, I love you. Can't wait to get home. So the... Griffiths knocking the lead back down to inside double digits as we're going to have a whistle and a foul called on the play, and that's going to send Savage to the free throw line. 
to shoot two. And once again, the Griffins are able to cut that lead down inside double digits, but a nice play to work the ball inside as Perkins is going to pick up his third personal, Dave. And you see the free throw numbers on your screen. Both teams doing an adequate job there. Tufts continuing to make theirs. They're six of eight now. As that's Savage at the line. It's now 17 of 17, Dave, from the free throw line yep. on the year. That's 100%. Yeah, well, I mean, that, those are the things that win games. As Gritted Mercy has to use a timeout, Mike, because there was nobody there to, um, to help get the inbounds pass from Clayton Wolf. This is a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. But, you know, a couple of, you know, uh, you know, brain cramps, I guess you could say, from, from Gritted Mercy here. Like, uh, it was that one inexplicable turnover right at the top of the key, and that time they failed to um, give Wolf any help there on the inbounds pass. So a 30-second timeout taken on the play. Tufts has their lead back up to 11. It's 52-41 as... Grid and Mercy had cut the lead down to nine here in the second half. So it'll now be Tufts as they're going to uh, look to come out on defense as it looks like Summers will inbound the basketball here, Dave, as we get ready to get underway. Yeah, Summers will inbound. And with him now is Rich Dunham, who started off the game very hot, cooled off a little bit, and they'll reset this inbounds pass here. So Summers will get the ball into Dunham as we're back on the way here with 17.35 remaining here in the second half. Dunham with the basketball. Dunham looking to work his way inside. Nice offensive move, but can't complete the play. And now it's Kabujin with the basketball. He works the ball out over to Savage. Savage feeds the ball inside to Rogers, who lays it up and in. And he's been an offensive force in the second half and really exactly what the Jumbos needed, Dave, which was to start working the ball inside. Yeah, and that was a really a nice look by Savage as well on the inside. And there's one on the interior by Cubbage. So. Yeah, and that's going to be a foul on Savage, Dave, and that's going to be a huge foul because that's going to be his third with 17.06 remaining here in this second half. As that's going to force him to the bench. And well, I don't know. Savage is still out there. Yeah, you're right, Dave. He well, is. Actually, you know what? I'm sorry, Mike. The foul was called on Rodgers, and it was his third. So it'll be Rodgers picking up his third instead of Savage. And now he has to come off the bench, Dave. He has six points here in the first three minutes of the second yeah. half. Grabbed a rebound or two and really was playing well. And... A tough, I thought that there were a couple of tough foul calls on both sides here, uh, Dave. And those third personals are big fouls. Yeah, I think they're going to try and get to the bottom of whose foul that was because we thought it was on Savage. They flashed it up as Rogers, and now the officials are coming together to make sure they get the right player who gets the foul. Yeah, either, either way it's going to hurt the uh, Jumbos, though, Dave, because... Those are two uh, two players that have been uh, giving uh, the Griffins problems all night long. And, you know, especially as we mentioned, Rogers coming out here in the second half and, you know, uh, head coach Bob Sheldon realizing percentages not on his side, continuing to try those three-pointers, came out with a nice plan to work the ball inside uh, to Rogers and, He's made it pay as he had all three of his shots here in the second half for all six of his points. Yeah, and from what we know, it will it was on Rodgers, the foul, and this will be a one-shot attempt here for Cubbage, who made the basket before this free throw. You see the free throws on your screen. So, so he, he'll he look to bring the Griffins back into uh, ten points as he hits the free throw, and he does, and it's 54-44. As we have another stoppage in play. Not sure this time what the stoppage is for. Unless they're still talking about the foul. I don't think so. so Not really sure. Yeah, so a stoppage in play, but we're now ready to get back underway. Kamujin with the basketball, working the ball up over to Brady as the Griffin show a little pressure in the backcourt. 
but a nice job by the Jumbos to break it. Gamujan looking to lob the ball inside. Nobody there but black jerseys, and now Summers comes away with the basketball. Summers over to Dunham. Dunham looking to work his way inside. The ball's going to be knocked away out of bounds, but it'll remain Griffith's basketball with 22 to shoot. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it just came off of Dunham's hands and out of bounds, but apparently got interfered with, so shot clock will remain at 22 seconds. So Dunham <laughs> inbounds the ball to Wolf. As Wolf looking to work on the play against Kabujan. Wolf pulls up that jumper, is up no good. As the ball's going to be knocked away, and Tufts loses possession and going in to slam the basketball is Dunham. He misses the shot, but the Griffiths able to maintain possession of the ball. They work it over to wow. Summers, whose three pointer is good. Big second chance opportunity makes it a seven point game. Yeah, that was the story of the early going for Gwyn and Mercy there, able to make it hurt again off the missed dunk. Kamujin with the three-pointer, and that's good. He hits his first shot, Dave, after missing five in a row and makes the lead back up to ten. Big basket for Justin. Dunham driving his way inside. Wild shot is up no good, but there to pick up the rebound is Cubbage, and it's 57-49. Yeah, as you see the three-pointer is on your screen, and another offensive rebound the other time down the floor by Gwyneth Mercy, another second-chance opportunity. Tufts back over 50% as they work the ball up over in the corner to DeBrine. His first miss of the night, and the rebound's grabbed by Dunham. Summers, the long three-pointer is off the rim. No good. Another but offensive enough. rebound. Yeah, big offensive rebound there. And they'll reset now, trailing by just eight with 15-15 remaining here in the second half. Dunham with the basketball. Dunham working his way inside and lays it up and in. Big basket that time by Dunham. It's now a six-point game. Yeah, that's part of the explosiveness we saw from Dunham in the early stages of the first half. It was missing towards the stretch in the first half, but he's gotten back to form here in the second. Kamujan working the ball out now over to DeBrine. Now in the corner over to Savage. Savage. Losing possession of the basketballs. It's stolen by Wolf, and here comes a three-on-one -on break. Wolf, beautiful look inside. That layup is up no good, and a nice uh, rebound that time grabbed by DeBrine, but he gets called for the travel, and the Griffins have really turned up the pressure, and we're going to have a whistle, and a timeout will be taken out on the floor. It looks like it'll be a 30-second timeout, so let's keep it right here, Dave, but the Griffins really starting to turn up the defensive pressure. Yeah, and again, that was again born out of the uh, transition game, and uh, Gwen and Mercy gets themselves another opportunity here via an uncontrolled uh, rebound attempt by DeBrine. So uh, tough uh, tough instance, su tough circumstances for, for Tufts, but really everything born out of that uh, Gwen and Mercy fast break in that transition. As you can see, the fast break points on your screen. So it's a 57-51 lead, and you know, Dave, that's as close as the Griffiths have been in, in quite some time yep. since uh, they, since the uh, Jumbos were able to open up that 13-point lead. They got it down to seven uh, late in the first half, but now they've gotten it down to six with the ball. Excuse me. Cubbage with the basketball, handing it off to Dunham. Dunham looking to work his way in, and we're going to have a whistle and a jump ball, and the possession arrow will go to the Jumbo, so a big turnover there for the Griffins. Yeah, so the tough, Tufts Jumbos take a timeout following that last sequence and are able to generate a turnover as a result. So nice job that time to stay poised and focused defensively. So it looks like Will Brady will inbound the basketball. And he'll get the ball in to Kuyubjan. And here come Jumbos with the basketball. Is going down on the play is Will Brady. And we're going to have a foul called on Dunham. And, boy, I thought that was a, t a tough call as well, Dave. Yeah, I thought Dunham might have committed the foul earlier in the sequence. And, you know, kind of losing balance was, was Brady. Fell down, got the benefits of the call. So that's going to be the second clock, foul on clock, Dunham. Clock. Both teams second. Uh, both teams with two team fouls here in this second half. 
DeBrian with the basketball. He looks to feed the ball inside, but another turnover as the Jumbos are turning the ball over a lot here in the second half, and it's all the way down to 4, 57 to 53. Yeah, and that plays right into Gwyneth Mercy's hands with that transition game. He said it countless times already this evening. That's the way they want to play. And as long as Tufts is missing shots and turning the ball over, it feeds right into what the Griffins want to do. The log three-pointer taking that time by Kamujan is up no good. And the rebound grab now by the Griffiths is driving his way inside and picking up the offensive foul on the play is going to be coverage. And that's a big turnaround here as uh, the Griffiths were trying to make it a one possession game, Dave. Yeah, and you know, very quietly they've whittled this lead down to just four. And it was, um, you know, it's getting shaky here. The largest lead was 13 points for Tufts. As you see, the turnovers just continuing to pile up here for Tufts. Yeah, they now have 13, Dave, and, you know, they've committed at least three or four turnovers here in the second half. They've really uh, started to turn the ball over a lot as they had seven at halftime, so they have six here already, Dave, in this second half. Jump shot taken that time by DeBrine is up and in, and he draws the foul, and you can see he took a clay, he got an arm right to the head on that, Dave. Good concentration by the freshman table to be able to follow through, hit the shot, and now he'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, so DeBrine now five of six from the floor tonight. Two of three from three-point range. His only miss was from three-point. So that foul will be on Clayton Wolf for Clayton. That's going to be his second. The Griffiths now with four team fouls as DeBry misses the free throw. And it'll be Griffiths basketball down by six. Wolf looking to streak his way inside. Tough fadeaway jumper is good. Yeah, I thought he might have lost control of where he was, but good look by Wolf. Made it count. 59, 55, 13 minutes remaining in the second half as Aronson pulls up. He takes the jumper, that's no good. And the rebound grabbed by Perkins, and here comes the Griffiths, but they turn the ball over. Nice shot by Aronson. Ball worked out to the three-point line, and the long three-pointer by DeBrine is good, and the freshman continues to play big here tonight, Dave. Yeah, he's just been terrific all night long, has been DeBrine, and you know, you wouldn't know it from the season statistics, but uh, DeBrine now six of seven from the floor. He's got 15 points, also leads the team with five rebounds. Dunham with the basketball. Dunham looking to work his way inside, and Dunham lays it up and in, and Rich Dunham is having a good second half, Dave, and he has 14. Yeah, they really need him to step up in this second half, and he's been attacking the rim and has been producing some real positive results from inside. 62-57 the score as they look to work the ball inside and the cross-court pass that time by Brady is going to be stolen as Wolf feeds the ball inside and laying the ball up and in is going to be uh, Sluion. And just like that, Dave, it's a three-point game. And all generated off that turnover, Mike, and that's where Tufts has been sloppy in this second half. 13-point lead now down to three. Oppenheim with the basketball. Oppenheim gets it over to DeBrine, who hands the ball off to Aronson. Aronson tried to work his way inside. He feeds it to Oppenheim. He misses the layup, grabs the offensive rebound, misses it again, and gets another one. He feeds it back now to DeBrine. His three-pointer is up no good. So uh, that time, Tufts couldn't hit on three opportunities, Dave. Wolf driving his way oh. inside. Might have gotten away with the travel, but lays it up and in. They have, but he really took it inside against three Tufts players. That's a tough play with the rest of his team behind him. Griffiths have worked their way all the way back to make it a one-point game as Oppenheim now is going to get called for the offensive foul. That's going to be the third team foul on the Jumbos, and the Griffiths will have their opportunity today, uh, Dave, to take the lead for the first time in quite some time. Yeah, and you can see the uh, shooting right now for Tufts has been down. They're still over 50% for the game, but it's just... 52% now, they've missed a bunch of shots, and really they've turned the ball over. You see that, that statistic on your screen, and a great many of those turnovers. Yeah, they have eight of those turnovers here, Dave, in the second half, and uh, 
you know, you look at uh, Gwen and Mercy, they haven't held the lead since it was 13-10, to 10, Dave, and they now have an opportunity with the basketball to take the lead for the first time since that time. Yeah, so still got plenty of time remaining in this one, just under 11 minutes to go. Summers with the basketball, heads the ball off to Saluion, and now it's Dunham. Dunham with a big second half, and he's going to get called for the carry, boy, Dave. Uh, tough call. Yeah, tough. He kind of bounced up and down with that one. The ball still in his hand. So a turnover returned. A Savage inbounds the basketball, and now it's Tyler Erickson, the freshman, with the ball for the Jumbos. Erickson over to Oppenheim, out by the three-point line. He feeds the ball off to Savage. Savage tried to work his way inside. He feeds it to Oppenheim, but we're going to have a whistle, and I think it was a traveling violation, yes, Dave, it was. on the on the. Uh, play so another big turnover as uh, 16 to 11 as you look at the halftime stats so nine turnovers here in the second half for the Jumbos. Yeah it's been a tough couple of runs up the floor for for uh, number 24 Max Oppenheim he missed those two open layups he got called for an offensive foul now a turnover. Spencer with the basketball Bounce pass now, goes up over to Perkins. Perkins feeding the ball inside and working his way free is Sluion to lay it up and in. And uh, Gwen and Mercy takes their first lead since early in the first half. Feed inside to Oppenheim. Oppenheim works the ball back to Erickson. His three-pointer is up, no good. Oppenheim there to grab the rebound, misses the putback, but draws the foul. Yeah, that's good work by Max Oppenheim that time. He found himself in... Uh, good positions to make a couple of plays. He had that beautiful pass to Aronson at the top. Aronson couldn't get it to count, but good follow-up that time by Oppenheim. As you can see, both teams have cooled off considerably from three-point range compared to how they started. Oppenheim now with a couple of attempts. First one's good. Yeah, so a big basket there by Oppenheim to tie the game back up at 63. First free throws of the season for him have come in this game. So he'll have one more opportunity as we have a substitution in the game now for the Jumbos at one more free throw upcoming here for Oppenheim as his second free throw is up and in. He hits them both to we give Tubbs a 64-63 lead. Yeah, and Oppenheim will now get spelled in favor of Luke Rogers who comes in with three fouls as we work under 10 minutes to play here as Gwyn and Mercy will have themselves a substitution. Courtney Kubich has come back in to replace Donovan Spencer, who's been quiet since the first half. So it'll be the Griffiths to inbound the basketball, now trailing by one with 9.30 remaining here in the second half as that's Wolf with the basketball. Wolf, bounce pass goes up over to Kubich. Now back to Wolf with 14th to shoot. Summers working his way inside. A nice bounce pass, but we're going to have a whistle, and it looks like that time it's going to be the uh, Griffins turning the ball over on the travel. Yeah, out of time it was Jordan Perkins. Shuffled his feet there on the baseline. They worked the ball inside that time to uh, Rogers, who just checked back into the game. That's he misses the shot, but he's going to draw a foul. Yeah, that's a tough call. Rogers was suspended in midair looking to get that rebound. And I thought number four, Matt Summers, had some good position there, but not the case. It's his first personal. <clears throat> Tufts gets a second opportunity here. So that'll be the 16 foul on the Griffins. Looks like we're going to have a timeout here, Mike, and it will be a full timeout. So, so why don't why don't we take a break, Mike? Yeah, so we'll step aside. Nine minutes, six seconds remaining here in the second half. 64-63. We'll step aside and be right back. Visit aarp.org caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care. 
When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. Jumbos leading when I was 64, six, 63. My dream good was to back make it and to forth the, the second half, Dave. Yeah, and a good six, job by Gwen and Mercy to get themselves back in it, Mike. They've really amped it up defensively. They've been better when on the six, glass in the second days half. Spent playing basketball. And uh, they've been uh, good at forcing turnovers. You mentioned my dreams to make it to the NBA. seven turnovers in the first half, when but they're six, up over that already my here mom, in the when I was second six, half. You can see the turnovers on your screen, 16 to 12. But when I was six, nine out of those my dreams to make it to the NBA. Here in the first 11 when minutes six, of the second half. You know, Dave, my mom with had just a over 17 minutes and 25 Ball seconds Georgia, remaining, no Rogers hit a layup fast. to F, give uh, the Jumbos a 13 point lead. S. But he drew a foul on the six, next play, had to go to the bench with three personal fouls. And Tuss was, uh, when I was six, or Gwen and Mercy, I should say, basketball. was able to take advantage to take the lead six, temporarily. But now a nice feed inside. Gives uh, Tufts a three-point yep. lead. Rogers back in the game, gets that one. He immediately gets the pass from the inbound. George, and I want makes you to a spot strong a move inside and F. punishes Face the Drew. defense. So 66-63. Tufts now difficult. with a three-point lead. Time to call 9 Griffin's with the basketball. Protect the ones you Spencer, love. Spencer looking to work his way inside. That shot is up no good. The ball tipped around. And the rebound is going to be grabbed by Savage. Fed inside now to Morris. His shot's going to be knocked away, but we'll have a foul on the play. Yeah, and Morris will now go to the line where he has been very good this season. And Tufts, you could see, attacking the basket after that loose rebound attempt. So that's going to send Morris to the free throw line. As that foul is is going to be charged to Cubbage. That's Cubbage's fourth personal. As Morris is able to hit the first. His second is up and in. So Tufts goes on a 6-0 run, Dave, after the Griffins take the lead. Yeah, so uh, you know, good job by the Jumbos to kind of stay poised here, starting with, the, with their defense. Dunham fighting his way inside. That shot is up. No good. Kamuja grabs the rebound. And here come the Jumbos looking to run. They feed that ball inside, but that's going to be knocked away. And it'll be Dunham over to Wolf. Wolf at the three-point line. Big possession coming up here, Dave, for the Griffins. Yeah, very surprised. Gwyn and Mercy didn't go right to the hoop with that one. As Wolf works Ooh. his way inside, that ball rejected emphatically. And it's going to be knocked off a of Wolf. Out of bounds, beautiful defensive play by Luke Rogers, and he's really been the difference maker here, Dave, in this second half. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't think he makes a difference. Luke Rogers, I'll tell you what, he was on the bench. Good and Mercy worked their way back. He's back in, and Good and Mercy's been on a roll ever since. Kamujin with the basketball, picked up his dribble, nearly knocked away, but he's able to feed it over to Morris. Morris working the ball inside to Savage, and it comes over to Rogers, who tips it up and in. As Rodgers continues his strong play, 10 points, Dave, all in the second half. Yeah, absolutely, and really, the, I believe the last uh, couple of baskets he's put in it as well on this little run here, which has now worked its way up to 8-0. Wolf with the basketball. Wolf feeding it over to Spencer. Spencer trying to fight his way inside among the Giants. He can't do so. Rodgers knocks the ball away and grabs the rebound. Now they feed the ball up over to Kamujin. His long three-pointer is good, and Dave, he missed his first five. He's now hit his last two, and just like that, uh, Tufts on an 11-0 run to open their lead back to 10. No doubt about it. Wow, that was quick, too. Two and a half minutes time, 11-0. Bounce pass goes inside now to Cubbage, tries to work his way inside, and Tufts doing a great job defensively inside as that ball's going to be knocked out of bounds but it'll remain jumbo basketball. And, you know, the Griffins have been trying to work the ball inside, but just too much Luke Rogers in there, Dave. And uh, they, really, the uh, jumbos have done a good, jo a good job using their jumbo size on the inside. Yeah, and that time Eric Savage converged along with Rogers for that last defensive stuff on the interior. As that ball is worked over to Rogers, now they feed the ball out over to Savage. As Savage's tough court course pass nearly stolen away, but Morris is there to play it. The long shot by Brady is good, and 14-0 run now, Dave, for the Jumbos. Yeah, and the Jumbos now 11 of 24 from three-point range. It's under 50%, but, man, has it been effective so far, and it's opened up a 13-point lead tied for their biggest of the game. 
So head coach John Barron in his 16th year will take a timeout. It'll be a full timeout. So we'll step aside here and take a break. 76-63 uh, to score. You're watching 17th annual Tournament of Heroes coverage right here on CSI Sportsnet. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. We're back here at the tank with six minutes and 25 seconds remaining here in game number one of the 17th annual Tournament of Heroes uh, tournament here at the College of Staten Island. And the Griffins did a great job, Dave. They worked their way all the way back from a 13-point deficit to take a one-point lead at 63-62, uh, but they haven't scored since then, and once again, the Jumbos got hot as they have uh, been now on a 14 run to regain their 13. With Rogers, you know, and him coming back into the game, he really gave Tufts that inside presence. Uh, Tufts has been better on the boards. They've cleaned it up with their ball possession, and really when you're able to feed it inside and get some open looks on the interior. And then defensively what he's been able to do, um, you know, st stuffing a couple of shots, playing defense down there. You can see him right in the middle. He gets his hands on another one. He's been the difference. Yeah, it's that time uh, it's going to be uh, Brady getting called for the personal foul. Tough call on Brady, but that's going to send Wolf to the free throw line, and that's really exactly what uh, Gwyn and Mercy needs, Dave. Yeah, absolutely here. They need to uh, work their way back in one possession at a time, and we're going to have contact here as trying to get away from uh, the defense was Clayton Wolf, and he used too much forearm that time. Yeah, I guess he used just a little bit too much. The official didn't like it as that time Wolf's going to pick up his third, and that's going to be the eighth team foul on Gwyneth Mercy. So it will be tough to inbound the basketball with six minutes and 16 seconds uh, to play, Dave. And it looked like we were going to have a barn burner down the stretch, a real back and forth game. You got to give Tufts a lot of credit. A young basketball team, Dave, and the uh, Griffins put a lot of pressure on them. They did a real good job maintaining their composure, and they now have an opportunity to take their biggest lead of the game. Yeah, maintaining discipline. Even when they fell behind by one point, they gave up a big lead. Be able to stay true to what they do. And here's Rodgers again, two yeah. opportunities. Yeah, he misses a shot, grabs his rebound, lays it up and in. And uh, on the play, it looked like uh, Matt Carter going down and grabbing his ankle. So he does appear to be okay. But, you know, Rodgers continuing his real strong play here, Dave, in the second half. Yeah, you see Tufts with the edge and rebounds overall. And Gridden Mercy at one point had a huge uh, – lead in offensive rebound since then it's 9-9 in that category as being helped off the court now is Matt Carter who hasn't seen much time at all and that's a tough uh, tough thing to watch there if you're a Griffins fan still some time here but good and mercy down by their biggest margin 15 points so Rogers now with 12 points all in the second half Six of seven from the field. And it's the Griffiths with the basketball now down by 15. Dunham with the basketball. Dunham looking to work his way inside. Good defense by Brady as now they force the ball out to Summers. Summers getting the ball back to Dunham. And good defensive job here, Dave, by the Jumbos. And another block shot. And they've really started to block shots here in the second half, Dave. Yeah, absolutely, and that was Savage who also saw some time on the bench with foul trouble, and since he's been back, he's been another force right in the middle of the uh, of the paint. So it'll be the Griffiths to inbound the basketball, looking for offense, down by 15 with 5.30 remaining. As that time, it was Perkins driving his way inside, and boy, uh, great job by the Jumbos once again uh, defensively inside the paint. Yeah, that was their sixth block shot of the evening. Gwen and Mercy does not have any blocks in the game. Ball worked in the corner now to Savage. 
Now back over to Rogers. Now Savage, his shot is blocked away, and here comes Wolf looking to run. Wolf looking to take it toast to coast, and he lays it up and in to draw the Griffiths to within 13. 13 points. Nice decision that time by the Jumbos to pass on the early three-pointer and work the ball back to Kabujan now with 15 seconds on the shot clock. Justin with the basketball, working the ball in the corner, and open Savage's three-pointer is up no good, but Rogers is there, Dave, to grab another huge rebound. They feed the ball up over to Kamujan, who hits the three-pointer, and he started ice cold, Dave, but he's been red hot here in the second half. Yeah, he's been great. A uh, couple of tough players have been really strong here, and it's hard to believe, as we have a three here, that was missed by Summers, another big rebound here for Tufts. Yeah, Justin with nine of his ten points here in the second half as they lob the ball inside to Rogers. Rogers got away with a push in the back. He actually is going to get the benefit of the foul call here, but he had a good forearm right to the shoulder blades of Summers. Summers gets called. We're going to have a full timeout here. Yeah, so we'll have a whistle and a full timeout, like Dave mentioned, with four minutes and 16 seconds remaining here in the second half. 81-65 to score. We'll step aside, take a break, and we'll be right back. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. We're back here at the College of Staten Island. As you look up, Dave, and approximately 8 o'clock or so, we'll get to see the men's team in action. Looking forward to that, a big game against Bates College. Yep, absolutely. We have uh, one more coming up, and uh, it should be a good one. You know, the Bates has struggled a little bit as, um, you know, they come in with a 2-7 and seven record. And, Mike, you see on your screen a gentleman up there in the plaid shirt. That's Steve Davidson. That's the father of Scott Davidson, one of the gentlemen that we honor here. It's always good to see members of the family back in attendance, and Mr. Davidson has remained close to the program. He calls me up at least – once a year to kind of check in on what we're doing. He gives his input uh, on the team and things like that. And it's been so great to see the Davidson family back. And uh, the Hannafins have always come out in full support as well. And, um, you know, the families really do appreciate what we're doing. And, you know, you would never know it, Mike, from, from the screenshot that we have. But behind us, the crowd is really, really strong here at CSI. We've got a lot of visiting folks coming in uh, contingents, strong contingents from both of these schools. So it's going to be Gwen and Mercy with the basketball as they find themselves down by 16, 81, 65 as that long three-pointer is up no good and the rebound grabbed by Morris and he's going to feed the ball ahead to Aronson. Now Morris putting up the long three-pointer and that's good and that probably will finish things up here, Dave, as it's a 19-point game. And you know what, Mike? It's a 22-2 run for Tufts. You know, Grenon Mercy was up 63-62 at one point in this game, and it wasn't that long ago. It was about at the nine-minute mark. As that ball is rebounded inside, and, and it's no good, but the putback by Barton is up and in, and that makes the score 84-67. Is driving inside is Savage, and he lays the ball up and in. And The length and, and just speed of this Tufts team is really – taking its toll on Gwynn and Mercy. You see Gwynn is not as fast as they were in the first six, seven minutes of this game. They've slowed their tempo down. Perhaps fatigue is a part of it. So three minutes, 13 seconds remaining. Dunham, the one-hander is up and in, and we're going to have a whistle and a timeout taken on the play. 86-69 with three minutes and 10 seconds remaining. It'll be a full timeout. So why don't we step as, uh, why don't we keep it right here, Dave? 17 point game for Tufts. And, you know, we talked about it earlier, but you know, really in this second half, it, it, it really has been the Luke Rogers show. He had no points in the first half, Dave. His second half line, six of eight from the field, five rebounds, two blocks. 
some free throws. He's really been all over the floor. And, you know, the comeback of the Griffins coincided with him picking up his third personal with the uh, with the uh, jumbos up 13 points. Yeah, and it happened at a really critical time, that, that third foul, and it forced him to the bench. And Gwyneth Mercy was able to take full control. And that's that's when this game sw swung back in Tufts, Tufts momentum. Um, he was able to come back in with Eric Savage and the, and the two of them on the interior, the sophomore at six foot eight, Eric Savage six foot three, but throws his weight around pretty well in the paint. Uh, really done a nice job. You can see the, the the plus nine in the rebound category, and really what they've done on the offensive glass. You know that was one area, that was one statistic where Gwen and Mercy was really dominating the game. And you know since then the the offensive turnover, uh, offensive rebounds, Gwen and Mercy is just a plus one in that department, but it was a lot bigger than that. And that's what those interior players were able to do, Mike, is just able to settle things down as Gwen, Gwen and Mercy now starting to press here, Mike, understanding that they are down by a heap with only three minutes to go. Yeah, Dave, and, it, you know, it's really been the Jumbos who've really uh, taken advantage of their size uh, here, especially in the second half as they pound the ball inside to Rogers once again and uh, lays it up and in. And I think the... Uh, Jumbos have found the formula of success, Dave, as he's now 7 of 8. Yeah, absolutely, and his second half line has been just terrific. You know, his name is going to be thrown out there for the all-tournament team at the end of tomorrow. We'll see how that goes, but doing everything he can to put his team in tomorrow's championship. As Wolf able to drive right down the center of the lane and lay it up and in as uh, there's two minutes and 30 seconds remaining here in this second half. As Savage brings the ball across the midcourt line. Now they work the ball over to Aronson. And Aronson's smart here, Dave, to run down the shot clock. Yeah, absolutely. There's no, at this point, Tufts doesn't even really need to take another shot in the game. And Gwen and Mercy would still have a, a tough time trying to get even in this one. So if you're Tufts, you just want to be smart here. But they're going to lose this one off of a turnover. Yeah, still a nice job running down a lot of shot clock. And now it will be... The Griffiths to inbound the basketball, trailing by a score of 88 to 71. So the Griffiths inbounding the basketball, and Wolf now will bring the ball across the midcourt line, gets it over to Dunham. Dunham now to Barton, works the ball out over to Summers. Now Dunham trying to work his way inside, and he's able to Ooh, lay it up and in and draw the foul. Oh, okay. I thought at first that we called it offensive, but I was like, there's no way that was an offensive foul. But, you know, Dunham has quietly had himself a really strong game, 18 points for the junior guard from Morris, Norristown, Pennsylvania. Yeah, this Griffiths roster made up of a lot of Philadelphia plays. Dave plays from a around the Philadelphia area, obviously the school located right in the vicinity. As we're gonna have a substitution here as Dunham will go to the free throw line, looking to complete the three point play. He does, he has 19 points to lead the Griffins in scoring. 88-74 the score, as it's Kamujan getting the ball out over to Savage. As they're able to get the ball across the midcourt line and smartly back the ball out now with 15 seconds to shoot. Aronson puts up that shot. That's no good. But going up and grabbing the rebound once again is Rodgers. And again, very, very wise here. No reason to, you know, quicken the pace here. Savage with the basketball. Now it's Aronson with 15 seconds to shoot. Now Aronson driving his way inside, feeding it off nicely in the reverse layup by Savage is up and in as he now has 22 for the Jumbos. Wolf, nice layup on the play as we have one minute remaining here in the game. 90-76 to score. As Kamujin will work the ball over and we're gonna have a whistle and a Perhaps a chance to get some substitutions in here for for Tufts. I know uh, working their way in was going to be Will Brady, who has been used sparingly. We'll see what um, head coach Bob Sheldon final orders to give his team. But they're 54, just under 55 seconds away from 
sealing up a trip. This is their first trip to the Tournament of Heroes and to Staten Island. Yeah, and, you know, for Tufts, they fell behind by a point, Dave, but then really exploded uh, and really did a nice job. They put a lot of defensive pressure on uh, the Griffins, especially inside, really gave them a lot of problems, and then were able to feed the ball inside to Rodgers. And, you know, Dave, they, the closer you get to the basket, the better, and he's done a great job of... <coughs> he got you all choked up, Mike. <laughs> he really did, Dave. <laughs> uh, Tufts really at this point, they could just take a take a real knee here as Gwyneth Mercy definitely putting pressure. So 15 seconds remaining on the shot clock, and we're going to have a foul on the play as Jalen Peoples, who's checked into the game, will pick up the foul. The Griffiths in the double bonus, so that will lead to free throws as Justin Kamuja will go to the free throw line now to shoot two. Yeah, Kamuja has really played well in this second half as well. Made some big critical three-pointers when Tufts was kind of ailing there for a little while. And yeah, Justin with just one point at the end of the first half, but he had three three-pointers here in the second half, and now a couple of free throws. And he has 11 points in the second half. And Tufts leading by 16 now as it's going to be the Griffiths with the basketball as that's Barton handing the ball off over to Wolf. Wolf now working it out over to Dunham as we're inside of 30 seconds remaining. Now the nice jump hook that time by uh, Greg Barton, the freshman. And that makes it a 92-78 game as the Jumbos throw turnover. the ball away. Yep. And uh, it will give the Griffiths an opportunity here. Is so, Mike, tomorrow afternoon, Gwyneth Mercy will be in the consolation game at 1 p.m. So if you're tuning in to watch Gwyneth Mercy, they will be playing at 1 p.m. We'll be live on the air at 12.45, and they'll play the loser of the next game between CSI and Bates. That game is coming up approximately 8 p.m. tip-off. As that's Kamujan with the basketball now as we run down the final 12 seconds or so. Brady just holding on to the basketball, and that's going to do it. A good start here, Dave, to the 17th annual Tournament of Heroes as... Tufts beats Quinn and Mercy by a final score of 92-78. Yeah, that was an entertaining game, Mike. Uh, it was. It started off fast and furious. It dissipated a little bit. Quinn and Mercy made their move in the second half. They actually took a 63-62 lead, but you could do the math. Um, a 30-15 to run to end the game for the Jumbos over the last nine minutes. Uh, sealed it up. Great interior play by Luke Rogers and Eric Savage, and that's all she wrote. The Jumbos will be in tomorrow's championship at 3 o'clock right here on CSI Sports Center. And we have another one to go coming up. Uh, we'll be back on the air in about 20 minutes or so. And then, of course, we'll get the next one started. So that's going to wrap things up here from the tank at the College of Staten Island. Once again, the final score, Tufts University beats the Griffins by a final score of 92-78. to 78. So thanks for watching, and we'll be back in about 20 minutes or so and get you ready for the start of game number two. Stay tuned, everybody.